Welcome to the 10 Minute Treasure. My name is Jeff Pospisil. And the other day I got a question about how do you clear out that opening balance equity that shows up in QuickBooks uh, or QuickBooks Online? How do you end up clearing that out? Because what does it really mean? So what I want to do is I want to show you the process I normally go through in zeroing it out where I match up assets and liabilities and try to have my equity section reflect that. And by doing this, you end up eliminating your opening balance equity. All right, so I'm going to use First Church as my example. And this is just the statement of financial position or the balance sheet. And it's as of March 31st. So it's not uh, the end of year one because you can do this at any time to fix your equity. So I'm going to walk you through this really quick. And hopefully it's somewhat similar to what you're looking at. But we have our checking accounts right up here, our bank accounts. These are just investment accounts and they are designated for various different purposes. While a lot of churches don't have fixed assets on here, this church does. So they initially they spent a million dollars on their church building and $240,000 on a parsonage. Accounts payable is just the bills they have to pay. And then here's the taxes and benefits that they have to pay. And they have a mortgage on, on the parsonage, we'll say. And so they have a total liabilities of $123,000. By the way, this is important to look at too. The total assets of $1,500,000. And then this is their equity sec section. So when they initially set everything up, what happens is they fill in their liabilities, they fill in their assets, and this number is just plugged in, this opening balancing equity. That's just offsets everything. Retained earnings, so if they've been using this for longer than, well, if they, if they went past their uh, fiscal year cutoff. So let's just say this uh, church started using QuickBooks last year. All their operating income gets closed into retained earnings. And then this is the net revenue is just their income from the current year. And you could see that total liabilities and equity equals total assets. So that's correct. So one of the things I'm going to encourage you to do then is to keep track by making uh, by saying this is this total assets minus total liabilities and equity. Because whenever that's off, so if I delete something, that shows me I have a problem, I gotta correct. That should always be balanced. That's why they normally call this a balance sheet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I did add, and you should probably do this too, is I did add all my designated uh, funds or donor restricted funds. So I did add that, I, I actually put them in a subgroup so that way they're, I can see the total of all those and I start matching up my assets to these designated funds. So for example, here's the these three and let's just say that that's all the money that's there. There's not any of that in our checking account that we also are tracking. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste those down there. And I'm gonna color code these just to make sure because we're gonna eventually have to do a journal entry. And then I have this missions fund. So maybe that's just what the anything that the missions committee gets goes into there. And maybe there's some extra funds in our main checking account. So, and that's not uncommon. You probably have a lot more than this, but maybe the youth have been raising money for a mission trip and they have 2,500 in there. And maybe we have a funeral fund and that's another 500. I like using round dollars when we're at there. So you can see right now, we've already used up a quite a bit of money that we'd have to even out. So if I wanted to balance this out, I would have to subtract that $218,000. So that's that lets you know what we have to do so far. Um, retained earnings, by the way, I normally like to, re to rename this. So if you're doing the equities, uh, if you're doing the donor restricted funds through your equity account instead of through your income and expenses, um, then I like to rename this as maybe uh, 
general fund beginning balance. Something like that, that lets you know that this is the starting amount. So in the general fund, we initially had, at least according to this, $30,000. So we had last year, they had operating income of $30,000 and that just carried forward into here. So then if I wanted to know my total general fund balance, I just have to add these two together. Um, the other thing that throws them off a little bit is you see this, this number is still huge, but that's because we have these fixed assets in there. So we have 1,240,000 in fixed assets here, plus this $120,000 mortgage. So that's $1,120,000. And what I do is I add another equity account, investment in fixed assets. So that was 1,120,000. That's going to throw things off quite a bit. I'm just going to go ahead and zero. So uh, I better mark this, by the way. And I did rename this. So I, I don't know if I need to mark it or not. I, I'm not going to do any adjustment to it. I'm going to put a zero there. And you see that we're still off by a little bit. And that's okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an adjustment here. I'm going to go ahead and put this down to 29,000. And I'm gonna just put a minus 1,000 here. So I actually had to reduce this by 1,000. So let me actually, let me go ahead and capture this number too. So I'm gonna go ahead and capture that number. That 1,337,000. So I'm going to delete this. Then this is going to go down also a thousand. This is going down 1,330,000. So this one's going to go to 29,000. And then everything adds up. Everything looks good. So I'm not going to do the actual journal entry because this is a fake church, but I will show you what that journal entry looks like. All right, so what I need to do is do a journal entry for all of these ones here. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna copy these over. I don't want it to wrap the text. So I'm gonna put the debit amount here and I'm gonna put the credit amount here. So the first thing is we want to zero out this whole entire opening balance equity. So that's already a credit balance. So we need to debit it for 1,337,000. And I'm going to go ahead and do one other thing too. I want to keep a total. You, your, your journal entry needs to balance. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, double check that. So equals this minus this. So what I've done here is I'm, I've just, I'm adding up all the debits. I'm adding up all the credits. So these ones, since these were zero and we need a credit balance, they all need to be credits. So let's go ahead and put them there. You see, we're still way out of balance, about by the same number we were before. We have our Investment in fixed assets. Oops, actually that needs to be a credit because it was zero before, so we need to increase it. And since it's in the equity side, we need to credit it. And then we just have our $1,000 to hit our retained earnings or general fund beginning balance is what that one is. And so then this is what your journal entry looks like. And so at the end, our, our opening balance equity will be zeroed out. Our general fund balance will be correct, uh, the beginning balance. And so we would have been off too. We would have said, well, we have 40,000. Well, actually we have 39,000 in the general fund. We have all this perfectly split out. One of the challenges is always gonna be when you make this mortgage payment, because you're going to be adjusting this balance. So if we make a mortgage payment, we might make a payment for, let's just say it's $2,000. Well, maybe it only reduces it by $500.
So when we end up making that mortgage payment, then we end up reducing this mortgage by 500 and then increasing this investment in fixed asset by 500. So what that journal entry ends up looking like, I'm just going to go ahead and copy these over here. So the $500, that ends up reducing it because it, a liability, if you debit a liability, it reduces it. And then $500 for investment in fixed assets. So that's how that ends up working. All right, hopefully that was helpful. And I'm gonna encourage you, by the way, you know, whether you do it out on paper or whether you do it like I did on a spreadsheet to go ahead and, and do this exercise if you're going to try to clean this up. Because what you want to do is you want to have an idea of what it should lo look like after you do that journal entry. And probably if you're like me, every now and then you do a journal entry backwards. And um, if I know what I'm supposed to see when I run that financial statement again, and then I have a better chance of knowing if I did it backwards or not. So that's my two cents on that. And hopefully this has been a help. Until next time, God bless.